Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. As usual, I've got a fair amount of machining and a little bit of steam engine stuff for you this week. The machining job is a steering rack. It's actually a Rover car, a manual steering rack, and I shorten it and modify it so that I can use it on a kit car he's building. I've had some really good news for Debs today, actually. Um, our job interview went very well. Uh, the, the person that's going to be working for rang up today asking if she would like a job in the training starts next Saturday. She's absolutely over the moon. I'm really, really proud. I'm really pleased for her. Um, when you think what, what, what was happening a year ago to what's happening now, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, we've been very, very lucky. Uh, very lucky indeed. I went to two car boot sales this morning. Uh, one early on and one at that name. The early on one had nothing, but I did pick up one or two, one or two decent items at the afternoon car boot sale. I'll bring the camera in later on and show you exactly what I've managed to pick up. I've also had one or two items given this week. A couple of nice grinding wheels, I'll show them. And some nice little bottle engineering size taps. I have put one or two videos up this week, um, traction engines. I was at an open air museum, Beamish, last weekend, uh, playing with a big foul off traction engine, and I put one or two little bits of video up with that. There was one other thing happened, uh, I've saved a bit of video for tonight. There was a, a lot of the traction engine there, and it had a leaking boiler tube. So, what happened, we got a Richard and myself got a couple of tapered. Uh, steel plugs made in a little long threaded bar and we'll put the plugs in each end of the tube tighten it up and seal the tube and means the lad it got his weekend with his steam engine working um, it's a method that was used for repairing boiler tubes in the day when boilers were used all the time on traction engines it's still used today on commercial stuff anyway I've got some bits clips of video of that I'll put that on at the end just to just for something different that's all I've been asked by a viewer, a lad that lives local, he does hot rod cars, kit cars. This is part of a steering rack, it's the steering rack of a rubber car, which he's going to use on a kit car and needs it shortening. He needs 45mm off the end of there and that thread putting back on. There's probably be a metric thread, I'll measure it. It's the thread that's on there actually, it's not a very good fit on the nut, what I'll call a slack thread. So the first thing I need to do is find out what pitch it is. It looks like a 125 metric. 125 is a very common pitch in the motor trade. I'm sure that's right on you somewhere. 1.25. It is 1.25. I'll bring the camera in closer and hopefully you can see the, the thread gauge in action. Right, 125 thread gauge is a perfect fit. I can cut 125 threads, no problem at all. But I need to take, say, 45mm off, so what I'll do, I've got a bit of spare material here, so I'll do a practice thread. I'll practice cut the threads on that bit before I do it for real, because I've only got one chance of messing up, that's the end of it. There's also a little bit of profiling work to do on the end of there. Make sure there's no bits of shite on these tapers. Just takes a very small amount to put the chuck off centre. Come on, you bastard. 
So one advantage with this lathe, it's got quite a big hole through the centre, quite a big bolt to the mandrel, so I'll be able to put the sand rack straight through there. With the box fad lathe, it only maintained it between centres. Right, so that goes through there. A few words to spare. So see, I've got to take 45 mil off the end, but I'll also have a little bit of metal left. That bit there, I can practice cutting the thread on. Clock gear, Jane, get it nice and accurately. Right, I'm going to set it for that within half a throw. Put a fine lip on all the jaws. The first thing I'm going to do is mark these 45mm for the finished length. Right, that's 45. Steel rule is more than accurate enough for what he, what he wants. It's within a couple of milli though, yeah. twice cut once and that's 45 mil so that's the finished length so basically I can pop this piece off here and cut a practice thread on that one there before going to the, into the job properly I'm just checking the side I've got 45 millimeter root in the wall measuring it again 45 mil Should be fairly decent material this, it certainly isn't hard. It should be something that's quite tough. things up just a little bit that's a recess I've got a machine in the end as well as a plastic cup goes in there which locates on a ball you can pick a ball and socket on a, on a skin rack in the first thing I need to do is set up the compound slide this needs to be half the angle of the thread, it's a metric thread which is 60 degrees, half of that's 30. Watch the set of 29 which is there 
actually showing 60 because it's 30 degrees to the centre area in the lathe. It's a good way of checking this one here before you cut the thread, which I'll show you. Right, so that's it at the right angle because we're going to advance the, the cut of the thread in with the compound say we're going to cut the thread properly this is the tool I'm going to use for cutting the metric thread it's a metric foam tool it's on centre height because I use it all the time what I need to do is make sure that the tool is square to the job and 90 degrees to the job there's an easy way of doing that Right, if I simply leave the tool post loose and touch that side of the tool onto a flat face on the chuck, which is there, like that, and tighten up the tool post, that means that that tool there has got to be at the correct angle to the job. I've gone through this before, but I'll do it again. We need to touch the tool off. Which is there, it's just touching from zero the cross slide and zero the compound slide. So that tool there was just touching. I want to lay in a nice little gear. A little bit slower than that. That's better. Going 65 RPM there. You can screw cut faster. Personally, I don't. That's better, even again, that's slower again, that's 45 RPM. I'll do it at 45 RPM because it's easier for the video to see what's happening. Everything's in mesh and I've got the lead screw turning, so if I engage the half nuts, the current starts to go forward, which is a good thing, it's going in the right direction. This being a metric lathe, I can basically engage the nuts anywhere. All I like to do is engage them on a whole number on the thread there indicator. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put a little bit of cut on. We'll wait for a whole number coming round. There's a the one there. Right, we're half the time here is that it's slowly going to go in the mesh and cut the thread. Hand on the half nuts all the time. Make the strip of the thread there. Just marking it, which is all we need. Once it gets to the end of the cut, where the recess is, where we we'll put the mark with the part of the tool, we we'll disengage it there. We then wind it out one full turn. Back to the beginning. Before I go any further, I'll get me 125 thread gauge and just check the all cutting with the 125 thread. I'm having problems getting a decent finish on the threads with that foam tool, so what I've decided to do is sharpen it with a high speed steel to the 60 degree profile. I've already rough ground it and I'm going to use this little grinder just to finish it off to put a finish on it.
puts a lovely finish on the high speed steel obviously you wear eye protection and you do a standard lane with a wheel when it's running not rocket science this head's adjustable in three ways set that at 30 We'll put some relief angle on it as well, 10 degrees. Machine the threads back off again. And I've mounted the tool I've just made. This needs to be set up so it's at the right angle of the job, 90 degrees to the job. For that, we use this thing here, which is some people call it a fish tail for obvious reasons. You've got to make sure that the tool fits into the 60 degree knot perfectly. When that's touching which it is one way, sometimes you can put a bit of white paper underneath and you can look down through and you can see better but it's on centre height it's the right angle of the job and it's nice and sharp so I'll try cutting some threads with that and see what sort of result that gives Right, I've got all set up again. I put a nice light foot on. Right, I'm waiting for a number line to come down to engage. One coming up now. Right, it's cut quite a reasonable thread. It's the metal's a little bit it's strange stuff, it's kind of what I would call grubby metal. Anyway, we'll cut the thread, the thread pitch is right. So we'll part this off and cut the we'll cut the real thread this time. measure now the depth of the thread and the machine a little recess in there for the part the screw cutting tool to drop off into. 